The fellows who work These in the, are the NFL pros. are the best. And, and it's nice to have them. In the second game of the 2001 NFL season, right after signing a brand new 10-year deal with the New England Patriots for $100 million, Drew Bledsoe was injured on a hit that nearly killed him. Oh, did he hit? Oh, my. And, and the ball, they're going to actually, it looks like they're going to rule that a fumble. And, and oh, look at Drew. Yeah, you see, uh, this is the more critical than the first down to the Patriots. A blow to his chest caused internal bleeding, and only the emergency trip to the hospital after the game saved his life. But the injury would change the trajectory of his career forever. Bledsoe will miss the rest of the regular season, and in his place, Except a rookie backup by the name of Tom Brady. Could Bledsoe and not Tom Brady have been the greatest quarterback in NFL history with Belichick coaching him? Would he have been the one to win six rings with New England? I'm Steven Jackson, and in this episode of Legends, we look back at the immensely talented quarterback by the name of Drew Bledsoe and what it could have been had things worked out a little differently. Slow down and then gets caught from behind. Ellis from behind and then Mo Lewis. Drew Bledsoe was born in Ellisburg, Washington, February 14th, 1972, where he would go on to attend Walla Walla High School. He was already a great athlete, eventually lettering in football, track, and basketball. Bledsoe would go on to play football at Washington State where he began his freshman year on the sidelines. But midway through the season, the veteran quarterbacks ahead of him would be benched. The six foot five freshman started five games, throwing over 1,300 yards, nine touchdowns, including a touchdown that he threw to himself. Oh, he caught it. <laughs> hey, got them skirts. Hey, get in there, touchdown. Not bad, right? Bledsoe went on to start every game his sophomore and junior season, setting school records. He finished his career at Washington State by destroying arch rival Washington in the Apple Cup, which was highlighted by a crazy catch by a receiver named Philip Bobo. Still has the football after the play fake going into the end zone. Watch Davis or Bobo. Oh! Touchdown! Dime in the snow. Philip Bobo with the catch. <laughs> I can see why New England saw the potential. Not only was he immensely talented with uh, an incredible arm strength, but he's thrown like that in the weather like that. Uh, typically what you see in the Northeast, right? What a catch, on a rope. Uh. Oh. Washington State would also be Utah in a Copper Bowl, where Bledsoe was named the game's MVP. He would also win Pac-12 Offensive Player of the Year. There was no mystery where Bledsoe would go in 1993 draft, he was selected first overall by the New England Patriots and started his rookie season. But it would be in Bledsoe's second season where he would show New England and the rest of the league that he was a superstar. In week 11, trailing 20-0 at home, Bledsoe led the Patriots to a dramatic 26-20 overtime win, setting a bunch of crazy records in the process. Back in the end zone, I mean, he put it anywhere the receiver's gonna get it. It's a beautiful play. Looked like to the fullback or to the running back, streaking down the sideline. Um, it's a heck of a throw by Drew here. He finishes 45 of 70, 426 yards, 6 of 6 on the last drive. The game winning catch by Kevin Turner. He threw the ball the NFL record 70 times. He would go on to have another NFL record of 45 completions. Both records still stand to this day. From that point on in the season, New England would go on to win six games, finishing with a 10-6 record and making the playoffs. Bledsoe will also be named to his first Pro Bowl, making a 22-year-old the youngest player to reach the Pro Bowl in NFL history. In 1995, Bledsoe became the youngest player in NFL history to surpass 10,000 career yards, another record that still stands today. By the 2001 season, Drew Bledsoe had secured a $100 million deal for himself, making a Pro Bowl three times, as well as leading his team to the postseason three times as well. The New England Patriots have found their franchise quarterback. Then on September 23rd of 2001, New England faced the New York Jets. With five minutes and one second left to go in the fourth quarter, linebacker Mo Lewis hit Bledsoe just before he ran out of bounds. 
Because of a torn blood vessel in his chest, Bledsoe would go on to miss the rest of the regular season, and the legend of Tom Brady was born. The Patriots finished with an 11-5 record, and Brady was officially named the starter, even after Bledsoe was healthy. But what few others remember is in the AFC Championship game against Pittsburgh, Brady was knocked out of the game with under two minutes left in the first half. Bledsoe went into the game, leading the New England Patriots to a victory. Had it been early in the playoffs, maybe they wouldn't have been a time for Brady to recover for the next game. Maybe Bledsoe would have gotten the start, won again, Belichick would have given him his job back, but it wasn't meant to be. Before the Super Bowl, Belichick said he'll be going with Brady and not Bledsoe as a starter. History was made. Bledsoe was a Super Bowl champion, but not in the way he imagined. The following season, Bledsoe was traded to the Buffalo Bills, where he made the Pro Bowl for the fourth time. It's not hard to imagine that playing with Belichick on the same teams that Brady did, Bledsoe might have collected a few more rings. So here's a big question. If Bledsoe never gets hurt, well, does he become the GOAT? My answer is no. And it's not because he didn't have the talent to do so and thrive. It's the small nuances in the game that makes ones great and makes others just good. In those decisions, Tom had to make those decisions in a moment, so we'll never know the answer to that truly. Was Drew Bledsoe a legend? Absolutely. But we all be left wondering how great of a legend he could have been if he never got hurt.